Alright, so our train experience is kind of a little bit of a letdown. Um, probably only about like 25% of it was through like rural scenic land. The rest of it was just through like trash covered urban areas. Um, so and when he says trash, he means Kristen complained trash. on average once every 30 seconds. <laughs> So, um, we're now on our way. Well, hold on. Can I just interrupt you? There were areas where it was like farmlands and like there were irrigation systems and there was just like trash floating in it. So, I think it's safe to assume that I no longer want to eat any vegetables here at all. Alright, go ahead. So, we're now going to the Sule Pagoda. It's just up here behind these trees. Um, this is kind of like the center of the city. We don't really know anything else about it, of course. We do know that it's a pagoda, though, so that's an improvement. <laughs> We're learning. Um, Alright, this is the pagoda, Sule Pagoda. We're gonna walk halfway around it. Over here we have this. Uh, oh, it's getting the spray wet. Yeah, we're feeling the spray from these towns. It's kind of weird how this is like sectioned off by these like barbed wire uh, barriers. Maybe it has something to do with the festival tomorrow. I don't know. Um, and I think that this behind here is City Hall behind this stage. We showed up just in time for a drum soundtrack. This is probably the most annoying time of the day to be here. Especially when you're trying to do a video. But uh, yeah. Nothing but the greatest information on our blog. <laughs> we go to that thing and maybe City Hall. <laughs> One water, 300 shot, 30 cents. I guess Song Khan has officially started. This guy's hosing down everyone who passes him. Including um, the bus window is kind of open. <laughs> He's like rocking out with that hose like it's an air guitar. <laughs> Do you see him? Yeah. <laughs> this guy's awesome. And drunk. He doesn't know it yet that I'm gonna become his best friend. So in Yangon, there really aren't all too many restaurants, like, as we know them, like, brick and mortar restaurants. Uh, but now that we've entered Chinatown, there's a lot of these, like, street food stands, um, which normally I think we'd be all about, but, you know, the hygiene conditions here are questionable. Yeah. So I'm not sure what we're going to do. So we just had dinner. Um, Kristen got an enormous soup. It was like two gallons of soup. Thank you. Uh, we got um, squid and oyster sauce and water and four beers. 7,750 shots. I just got some crickets for a thousand shot. Um, I'm going to try them. We actually had some in Bangkok before and they were quite delicious. What grosses me out though is if like you move the bag, it looks like they move. Bleh. Someone needs to tell them this isn't real toilet paper. <laughs> Alright, I'm starting off with a leg. So I'm upset. Alright. That gives me some encouragement. It's actually quite good. It does smell good. It is good. <laughs> he um took a can full of these crickets and then put it in like a bag. Deep, uh, oil. Smells like garlic. Yeah, yeah, it's like garlic, buttery oil. And, um, I mean, they were already pre cooked. He just did it, I guess, to heat them up and give them some flavor. And then he put them in um, like a sifter, let them dry for a couple seconds, and then put them in this bag. Um, I actually really enjoy it. It creeps me out, though. Ones 
lens with the really big eyes, so I don't have to. Yeah. When we tried them in Bangkok, I told you it was similar to the one I had the first time, but slightly different. This is more similar. Yeah. Have some more. I should have told him I wanted less for 500. Like, what are we gonna do with this? We're gonna eat all of them? It seemed like he was in the mood to negotiate. No, he was in a, yeah, he was really cranky pants. Well, you can get some fried winds or some cribsy noodles. Your choice. Fried moisture brain. Whoa. Sorry with the bad camera work, I just shivered because um, that is so disgusting to me. My body just convulsed. <laughs> um, so we just finished dinner number two. Um, we had four more beers and we had four skewers of pork, squid, and raw chicken. And 7,900 chops. Alright, so we are approaching, hello, hello uh, day one of uh, New Year in Myanmar, uh, which is called Thang Yan. Uh, we finally figured that out. Um, I was reading that, interestingly, uh, the, the New Year is uh, calculated based on the lunar calendar, um, but the celebrations, which are three days long, are figured out based on the Gregorian calendar. So actual New Year's Day was... <laughs> Water, uh, I think we brought the waterproof camera. New Year's Day was actually yesterday, but the official celebrations start today and they run for three days. It's kind of funny how the celebrations don't even correspond with the actual day of New Year's. I'm not sure what to expect other than just being soaked with water, which is fine because it's hot as hell out here. We're not sure if we're targeted more often. Uh, from being doused with water because we're foreigners. I'm sure some people target us. Look at all these hoses. These are all water hoses. I find it kind of interesting because for the last few days we've been listening to nothing but like traditional New Year's music and now they're playing all this. I don't know why. Look, they're pumping the water out of the lake. This is how they get all the water for those hoses. We're sweating from the heat right now. It is brutal. So we're going over there.
fall asleep in the taxi car. to go to a place that was very different than the rest of Southeast Asia. Um, this is definitely the most, maybe except for Singapore, but in a very different way. Thank you. It was very different than the rest of Southeast Asia. Um, like we said earlier, a mixture of Southeast Asia and India, probably more heavily influenced by India. Um, and it was also great to be in a place that has so recently started, allow started allowing tourists into the place. I don't think I've ever been to a place like that before. And you could tell it's very uh, rustic and, you know, just up and coming. Um, and you could also tell how fast things are changing based on the things that we read and the things that we experienced. Um, you can tell how fast it's being built up. And I'm sure in like five years, it'll be sort of more on par with some of the rest of Southeast Asia. Um, my highlights were Bagan and surprisingly Mandalay. I didn't really uh, expect too much out of that, but it was a really interesting city that was like, as we said in the video, um, just sort of like stuck in the past. And uh, as opposed to Yangon, which is a little bit more modernized, um, and it just didn't have that feel of being you know, in like the third world like Mandalay did. So that's why I preferred that. Um, I also like the Shui Dagan Pagoda in, in Yangon. I thought that was amazing. And today, um, finishing off our time here in, at the Water Festival was really cool too. So those are my highlights. Are you happy um, with the nine days that we spent here or would you like to have stayed longer? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy with the nine days. I'm ready to leave. Um, so my biggest highlights were all, was also Bagan. I loved it. Um, it was just so awesome, like the plethora of um, stupas that were just around. There were thousands, um, all different shapes, um, well, mainly the same shape, but different styles, um, different sizes. It was just beautiful. Um, it's really, really awesome. Um, I also really enjoyed the water festival today. Um, it was more exciting than I thought it would be with um, the locals like grabbing Justin and I and at times kind of fighting over us um, and just like grabbing our hand or our arm and dancing with us and forcing us to like be a part of their celebrations. That was really awesome and rewarding. Um, I guess I'm also happy with the nine days that we spent here. I'm ready to move on. Um, and my low light, oh, well, not low light, my um, downside of the trip also happened to be at the water festival where there was a little bit of a unwelcome intrusion on some of the boys' part to me, um, where a few of them, like there was this foam party area and I had um, several hands go up my shorts. Um, so that was not okay um, at all. But I don't really want that to like damper how I felt about it. It's a little hard though because like it literally just happened maybe like two hours ago. Um, but uh, I really love Myanmar and despite what I just said, I do think that this has been one of my favorite countries that we've been to um, ever. I love like the style um, that the people still wear, um, their like ethnic um, attire um, for the males at least like they wear the sarong. Even though they wear like a polo top or a button down shirt on top, they still wear their traditional clothes bottoms down um, and also how they all put um, it's like a backwards blush for women. Like at home, we always try to like put rouge or like tanning stuff, and here it's all about like whitening. Um, and I thought that was really interesting where a lot of people have different like squeaks here, 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 or like circles, dots, like really any shape, um, any size, some just completely white face. So it was really interesting. Also, another shock is um, how many people chew tobacco leaves. Um, and that betel juice, betel be nut, betel bug, betel nut, betel nut. All right. Yeah. Um, and uh, pretty much.
brush every one's teeth. That that is from the betel nut, not okay. tobacco. They put okay. tobacco, they mix tobacco with it, but I think yeah. it's mainly the betel nut that causes that right. effect. Like their teeth are uh, stained red brown, and rotten, and rotten, yeah. um, and or missing. Um, and it's just like some kids. I mean, some kids that we were dancing with today. I, I saw some of them. They were like literally at the age of two.